Is there anything previously that you miss since being here? <laughs> oh, no. Miss? That's an answer. No. I mean, I mean okay. So actually, that was... yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let, yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. There's one thing, one thing that I miss and that person's not here anymore. Mm. Oh, that's fair. So that there's only one thing that I miss. That's from fair. that. I was thinking you were going to say something like, "Yeah, having somebody go around and take orders for delivery, food delivery." Because we don't, they did, we don't have regular lunches people, here anymore. The we people don't. from the bakery we starve. We seriously starve, and that's not good. Yeah, we should we should fix that. We can fix that. We can fix it. Man cannot yeah. live on Dr. Pepper's alone. So we are Cryptic Tattoo and Social Gallery, and this is Artistry Unearthed. How's that? That's <laughs> great, man. Hey, Boom, that done. works. <laughs> that works. Uh, no, uh, so this is our first uh, episode, episode zero, as they call it. Or Minus the uh, zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's uh, episode zero or the, or the episode that will be a little too cringy later on and deleted. But it's kind of our test introductions. Yeah, because this will be horrible. No, it won't be that bad. <laughs> it won't be that bad. No, I, I no, this is this will be cool. Usually, the things that I give a crap about when I do recordings and I do um, like streaming and stuff, a lot of it comes down to the lighting and the background. And we nailed it. Like we made a wall of skulls, which we is did. probably nothing good for. This doesn't do any good for anybody listening more than watching. But there's like 160 skulls on that wall. Hand painted, countless hours <laughs> and molds. And well, the benefit really of cool. being a new studio, a new tattoo studio, is that you know, like in the beginning, it's a little slow, and it was like during a slow period. It was like towards the end of summer when we first came in here, so everybody was still out at the lakes and the rivers, and you know, they didn't want to be out. We there. were here making skull right. molds because we're metal. <laughs> you know, some of us were busy. You were pretty busy. Every now and then you come in to grab something to eat and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, head to toe and plaster. Nothing. Eh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of white like you... powder in that back room. I know. I know. <laughs> so much. You step outside to have a smoke break and a cop sc scrolls by just glaring at you. Like, hey, uh, yeah, we're new. We're here. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I got powder all over me. It's fine. I'm, I'm putting in walls. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. We're doing... We're constructive artists, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we have a skull wall. It's a it's a crypt inside cryptic. I don't know. I'm pretty proud of it. A lot of it was also just the fact that we were able to uh, when we came in here, we had this idea from where we were before. You know, we had an idea that didn't work out. And I don't usually brand with skulls, but I'm a sucker for concept. So when we got here, and you and I, as soon as we walked in this back area, we looked at that wall and we're like. Boom. That's <laughs> like, it. You That's want, money. You wanna you wanna make skulls? I'm like, yeah. Can we do it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's try it. And we just yeah, we just jumped in. And that's kind of cool. That's really that's uh that's liberating being able to just pull the trigger mm -hmm. and make a decision. And I hope you and Mandy were okay with it because we're yeah. here now. <laughs> they have to be. I love a done. I love a craft project. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's you know, that's kind of what it was. Like I I'm suddenly into skulls now. Everything's skulls. So you're contagious, David. Yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, quick introductions. Uh, I am Nate of Mammoth Inc., Mammoth Everything, Mammoth Press, um, tattoo artist and digital artist and animator. And co -found I'm co-owner of Cryptic Tattoo and uh, co-founder of Clever Kaiju, which is important. I promise I would say it. Um, Overachiever. <laughs> it's a design and animation studio with focus on art education and and community outreach. And I think you, all of you, both of you have dabbled. Well, you and Mandy for sure have dabbled in it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so who are you? I'm Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, I'm Kelsey of Ruby Blue Tattoo, and I'm your friendly neighborhood shop mom slash golden retriever and so i'm here She's i feed people it's a, it's a good time <laughs> i never said that <laughs> i said it okay it's fine um yeah and i'm the newest i'm the new blood i haven't been tattooing for a year yet so i'm loving it though oh really no like uh, apprenticeship and all 
Huh. For yeah, the long? first time I picked up a machine was the it's end been, of the first week of February. It's been so and that was, I should not have been picking up a machine. <laughs> <laughs> but no. that was the first time we picked up a machine. No, but so you're coming up on a year, right? A um, year since I started tattooing on like honeydew melons. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, that's been a busy year for you then. I got. We put you through hell. <laughs> right. March was when I started knowing what I was doing. Ah. So. Just in time. That's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. And David, you've. You've been at this for a while. I'm just the old man of the block. <laughs> the old man. The no, old we man call you, on we, the block. We call you veteran. You're, you're the time walker. The vet, the How time long have you been tattooing? 25 years next year. 25? 25. So, yeah, you're you're a walking time capsule. You're a tattooed time walker. You've seen, like, different stages of the industry over. You've been a part of it. I've seen you know? a lot. Yeah, you've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. <laughs> so, a whole lot. So, in, in 25 years, and really, I think the industry has changed a lot in, like, the last 10, maybe 15 years. It's changed a lot in the last three. It, like, that's true, too. In the last three to five, for sure. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, probably because of my introduction. <laughs> no. Um, so, in, do you remember your, your apprenticeship? If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to call it i think you know that we all kind of at that point kind of come from the same type of background yeah you know the the, the apprenticeships weren't really i don't know they weren't really a given kind of had to work your way through what they called an apprenticeship you were kind of okay. like i wasn't even really shown how to set the depth on my needle of course that's back when we use coils and yeah i mean you yeah guys there was a lot more didn't to have that yeah, yeah didn't have that luxury so yeah it was it was having to figure all that out on my own and and it, the rest is is so it's not that much different self -taught. than a lot of us today just uh just a different environment I, i'd say the environment it, it, would it be is but it's 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 done all wrong like people yeah. are not people are not taught the right way Okay. They're just, I think, I think apprenticeships anymore are just kind of rushed and just thrown together. You know, apprenticeships should take a good, for me, a good two, three years, you know, it's, it's a trade. There's a lot That's to rough. learn. Yeah. And now people, <laughs> now you have people out there getting licensed in 30 days and yeah and putting, <laughs> putting needle to skin. And that's, you know, there, there's, there's a whole lot more to learn and, and, and they just, it, it's tough on on people that are just starting out if they're not grasping or understanding the logistics of what what paved the road to get them where they're at so they there's a it. there's a lot of like um like the history of tattooing is 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 pretty interesting um and i mean and i i did a, a i did a presentation in college about like the origins and some of the earliest like civilizations and i'll get into that that's nerdy stuff but like there was you know tattooing had like and it was a bit of a stigma but it was really in a reputation but it was actually built in a lot of truth where it was it was built by the industry was built by uh like i don't know misfits so to speak for lack of a better word or or miscreants or outcasts people that you know that they made it for them by them or you know it was it was for tattoo artists by tattoo artists is that is that accurate is that i mean i i i mean of course i mean tattooing is ancient i mean just sure, it's a yeah. matter of, <laughs> of how it was it, it came really to surface you know I, i'm not going to say that i'm all that educated on that much you know okay. that, that history in it i mean i know i know the history of of you know where it was when i you know when and I that's what first i mean. got tattooed yeah and, that's and what understanding I mean. I'm talking within and, our lifetime. And, and becoming, you know, becoming an artist and really digging deep and and understanding the people that paved the way. You know, you get you've got guys out there like Jack Rudy and and you know Loud Tuttle. Tuttle, rest in peace. But you know uh, Jack Armstrong and and people of, of that tenure that um, really you know push the you know push the envelope. They had coil machines didn't use gloves didn't you know th yeah, those sort yeah, of things yeah. you know um and you watch all of that over a quarter century evolve into what it is today and it's 
stark difference. You know, I, I just, I remember what it was like getting my first one at 18 and, and sitting in that shop and going, Oh my God, you know, this, this, what am I doing? You know, this yeah, is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Here I go. You know, I want to put well, something permanent on my body. And then, you know, once you get it done, you're just like, Whoa, okay. And then you just, you get addicted, you get hooked and you're like, man, this is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, never did I think that, you know, at 18 years old that I would be where I'm at right now. That's fair. Because <clears throat> that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't even in, in my thought process, in the forefront of my mind, backside of my mind. Well, that's the relieving. darkest spaces of my mind was <laughs> I ever going to be a tattoo artist, you know? Because you ran a hair salon. Did, now, did you do the hair salon before you started tattooing? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Long before, and then it was it was it during your hair salon days that you got your first tattoo, and you're like, oh my god, no, my no, that was well after I got oh, my okay. first tattoo, in and then so 19, you came back to it, 1989, yeah, um, and it wasn't until uh, I'm gonna say it was early mid mid 1999 we're gonna party like it's 1999 <laughs> um, well 99 i guess we need um, to party like but it. yeah that i mean that's and that's i like i got my start I, really i think 10 years too late i came in i came into bad, it yeah. 10 years too late i should I, sh I should be looking at this as like okay i've been tattooing for 35 years <laughs> you know um I, I I just I look back on my career and go, wow, I could have started so much sooner if I would have just known that's that's well, the direction. I that's but I had of... I had other things mm -hmm. that I was doing yeah. in my life that that you know was totally different, you know. And I think that's part of that renaissance, so to speak, that is you know the the change in the industry from because before, whenever you wanted to be a tattoo artist, you know, and you were looking for an apprentice, like. Like from what I understood, and I was invited into the industry, so I, I, all my knowledge is from watching other people that got into it, and you know, from um, from the outside looking in, uh, you know, you had to spend a lot of time. Like the best way for you to find an apprenticeship was to spend a lot of time in the shop, get to know the artist, get to know people, get get become a regular of the shop, but, but get that work was, from them. You had to find you had to find the right shop. You had to find the yeah. the, the the mentor the the individual that best suited your interests sure. and, and the type of, of art concept that you were after. I mean, otherwise, I mean, you get in, you get in with an artist that's not on the same page that you are, which is ideal. It's, it's kind of difficult to hone what you're wanting to do. You get it on the same page and you're just like, okay. And that was, this will fly. That was ideal, but that's not oftentimes how it worked out. So no, I, that's still I mean, today. it doesn't, it, no, and it doesn't work out like that now. I mean, right. it's like when I went in for my apprenticeship, you know, I went in with some, some cheesy drawings and was like, Hey, you know, I want to learn a tattoo. And, you know, I'd been tattooed by the guy before and, you know, we had multiple, multiple discussions and it was, you know, one day he was like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but yet he liked a lot of the things I wish I would have known better back then yeah um to make that exactly what i was just telling you to make that choice a little bit differently to where i i went and sought out somebody that was more on the same level of what i was wanting to do yeah yeah i'm curious did you formally say i want an apprenticeship and they said yes you have an apprenticeship or did it just like did people more often show up and just not leave and it happened. <laughs> um, no, no, I, no, I actually, <laughs> like I live no, here now. <laughs> I actually went in and asked him. I was like, "Look, man, I want to learn to tattoo. Can you show me?" Uh -huh. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I can do that." Okay. And he was like, "Just you know, you just need to come in, and I'll show you the ropes, show you some things, and you know." And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't until I was trying to think, man, that was a long while ago. Um, it was at one, one shot before he moved to another. And then, you know, cause I spent two stints at that same studio, mm. um, because I had, I had learned and then ended up going, um, out to Nevada and, and tattooed out there and then moved back here. And then I spent a second stint, which was a whole lot longer than, than the first, you know, the, the first apprenticeship stint, which. I should have spent, you know, a few years there, but it wasn't even like that. You know, there the, that apprenticeship kind of got tossed to the side, and I was left 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 for the wolves, you know. And it was like, teach, you know, how bad do you want this? 
Yeah. You know, how, how, how bad do you want to become a tattoo artist? You know, and and it was okay. I got to start learning and and yeah. watching watching videos, watching other artists, um, going to conventions and watching people put down ink. You know, and then. Well, and there was a, a time where, you know, like the it was coveted secrets, you know, like and it's a much different than it is nowadays where you can find machines, you can find videos, you can find you can learn. A lot of people are working in their kitchens and learning. And it's it's not ideal for many reasons, sanitary wise. And but, you know, and, and then when you do get an apprenticeship after, I don't know, like a lot of people learn in prison. And we've had experiences where we've had to explain like, OK, everything you think, you know, you're going to have to unlearn before we can really it's, show you. You know what? It's it's like that even not in prison. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you there's you people know, out there weird. that just go and they'll buy a Walmart machine and think that they can just tattoo anybody. And it's Amazon. It's go. an Amazon yeah. machine. It's a <laughs> you know, you can get the you can get them through Walmart. Oh, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, Walmart. we are blowing up. Right. <laughs> Sponsored no, by Krabby Walmart really nice. Machines, brought to you today by. <laughs> you know, and there was a it, there's this this history and the stigma, so to speak, that you know, getting an apprenticeship, you're going to be subjecting yourself to you know a lot of physical and mental abuse, and you know, and because it, it was a, it's a close knit, like almost like Sith setup, where you know, like or or even like a like a Jedi setup, where it's like it it's a huge commitment and a huge like. Uh, connection between a mentor and their apprentice and it's just like what happens during that apprenticeship stays in that apprenticeship and I, there, it's should, very... there should be it, that apprenticeship should be it should be tight knit and and very close right. um because you're going to spend a lot of time with that person you're going to be showing that person a lot of things yeah. and but it's um, like a lot of a in your experience in your apprenticeship was there a lot of like hazing was there a lot of or was it mostly no like... there to be honest with you no there there wasn't um my second stint at that shop there were newbies that came in and there was a lot of hazing that went on yeah a whole lot of hazing um some of it fun some of it was probably actually i won't say probably it was overboard <laughs> oh, right. way overboard um <laughs> You know, I won't mention names. I'm sure some of them will probably hear this. Yeah, no, and that's fine. We don't <laughs> so, have to mention names. So you know, names. it's it's it, it, it's. It, I mean, it was it was all it was all good. It was fun. I mean, it was a a time, you know, when when you know people were learning. I I had an apprentice at that time, and you know, he's he's out there just tearing it up. Yeah. You know, so I mean, did you it's, beat him up? No, no, we didn't yeah. beat him. See, up. Okay, so the so the we curve... made, we, he he worked hard though. I mean, he worked yeah, hard. Sure. He cleaned tubes, <laughs> built needles. He yeah, he did yeah. he did a lot of things, man. A bunch yeah. of things that we we won't. That you guys know. yeah. But I voluntarily learned. I I had to like sneak a coil machine out from a drawer to disassemble it and put it back together. Because look, there's something about like whenever I was brought in, I knew that that was kind of it could be the way it was going to be. But I also know that I was a grown ass man, like I was in my 30s already and I had other things, you know, I wasn't going to be treated like shit. And thankfully, I wasn't like I hazed you. Did you? <laughs> oh. But I, I, I also expected it a little bit like I, I didn't I knew I was the new guy. And I didn't really know the depth of my situation at the time. And, you know, but it doesn't matter. It all fixed. But, like, I didn't know that there was a lot of that behind the scenes stuff going on. Because when I came in, everyone in the shop that we met at were pretty tightly knit. Like, you, it felt like everybody was on, like, you know, everybody knew each other well. You know, you guys were like a, a small, like, work family. You guys, you know, I felt like I had to earn my way into it. And I'm adorable, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll weasel my way in if I try hard enough, you know, okay. and I did and it's fine. But like there was a lot of things about my process that I wasn't even really aware of and it. But but like I was brought in as like a friend, like a, a talented artistic friend that got to hang out with my mentor in his shop. And, you know, and honestly, that's not bad. But there was a lot of things I wish I'd learned a lot of peace of mind that I wish I or a lot of questions I wish I knew to ask, you know, and. Uh, and like, I don't regret it at all. Thankfully, I had the discipline as an artist to like push and figure out things on my own. But over time, I was able to look over your guys' shoulders and ask you guys questions. And eventually you broke. And I remember the very first day that I did a piece. It was like a big black work piece on this girl's leg. And I remember the first day you came up and you were like, here, turn, turn, and look at me. And you got down on one knee, you got your glasses and you looked 
You looked it over, and I'm like, like holding my breath the whole time. And you go, yeah, it was pretty solid, man. Good job. You get up and you walk away. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> I was like, that's a peer that I want to impress, and that's you know, and that's a big deal to me because I mean, she loved it, and that's awesome. The client, the client approval is always number one. Like that's that's a job well done. Mm-hmm. But when you when you get your peers to say something, you know, to other people who actually know your your craft and what you're doing and the, and what you're going for, if you get their approval, it, it hits different. And that's something that me and Gary and Kaiju talk about all the time. Like if you can, if you can win over your fans and the people that you look up to and the people that you model yourself after, that, that's, that's how, you know, you make it. And I don't know, that was, that was forever seared in my brain of like, okay, I it does, but I, I, I think that your character, your character is what, what sells it. I mean, you can have your peers all day, look at your stuff and be all approved. You know, that looks great. That looks great. No, that's that's true. Great. <laughs> but, but your, your, your character and how you carry yourself and how you present yourself is what, mm-hmm. what it needs to be about. That's what it's. Well, for, if for I was me, bad, that, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, all the accolades are all great and everything, but you know, your character speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, I agree. And how you just approach things and how you look at things. And um, I imagine if we were bad, you would tell us though. I don't think we'd be sitting here. I, I, was say, bad. I mean, spoilers. He's waiting for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right. He's going to wrap it up in a little gift. It's like, you suck. Here you go. It's like, you're, you know, you're, you kind of put a, a lot of chips on the table here. <laughs> So your apprenticeship, you had a different Kelsey. You had a, you you had a some hoops to jump through. Is that right? Like even before? Yeah, I don't feel like I came from a typical background, David. I I feel like I got a late start too. So I totally feel that. Like I see people coming in when they're, you know, too young to even legally tattoo yet, and they've got somebody that's still willing to take them in and be like, hey, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna draw drills, and you're gonna learn how to clean the shop, and you're gonna watch until you hit 18, and then you know. We're hitting the road, like, let's do this. And and I've seen talented people do that, but like I came in, you know, an established adult that had been working at a desk for more than a decade and, you know, doing grown up stuff. And yeah. COVID did weird things to all of us. And I came out the other side of it being like, hey, is art a real career option? And so I spent a good seven, eight months drawing every day for a few hours making a portfolio because I just had, you know, dozens of things I'd never finished. Which is smart. Yes. Right. And That's most most people that walk in looking for an apprenticeship don't even have one of those in hand mm-hmm. it's right. they just walk in and go man i want to learn to tattoo okay well you got any artwork well uh, i got this one picture on my cell phone if you give yeah, me 10 minutes you, to dig you, for it in bad lighting well, i got no, this backpack full just, of <laughs> magazines that i drew on a sharpie yeah <laughs> and, you know here a couple yeah. napkins yeah and, well and that was something that um when you came into the other shop and you walked straight up you had I don't know. It was, it was refreshing because you had a portfolio, you had Mm -hmm. it and you had it organized and you had like, these are drawings that I think would make good tattoos. You started with those first and you're just like, and these are things that I'd like to to translate. I mean, Mm -hmm. and it was, I don't know. It was, it was definitely. You had had several different mediums. You you had just pencil drawings, ink drawings, you had digital media, you had paint, you had had all kinds of different styles. Yeah. And I had, so that, that, as you said, that's refreshing. I mean, when you can see multiple styles Mm -hmm. of artwork, which means that you're going to venture in, but then, I mean, to like where you're at now Mm -hmm. is like, you've, you've found that little groove of yours that you like to do that fine line, right? A fine line work. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of have a a niche. Did you? think that that would be the direction you want um i did like fine line and i liked florals from the get-go that was something i liked i mm-hmm. always liked the nature stuff and the nerd stuff and a lot of what i do is nature stuff and nerd stuff but there was definitely stuff that i liked that i thought i would enjoy doing and then i got into it and i'm like nah, i don't <laughs> like geometric yeah. geometric yeah. is cool i i don't yeah. really want to do it <laughs> and, but cool. you know I, I think we all get to that point to where we're, when we start we're just like uh, I'm into this, I'm into this. But then as your career goes, mm-hmm. you're going to find other things that you're going to be like, you know what, I want to try that. I want to mm-hmm. do this. Yeah. I want to try this. And it's, 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 you just got to take that big giant bite and go, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm mm-hmm. going to see what happens. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, you may find that, wow, okay, I, I did something way out of my, <laughs> my box there. And, mm-hmm. and it come out really good. And then you're just like, 
okay, you know what? I'm going to keep doing some more of these, right. some more of these, more of these. That's kind of how portraits were for me. It was like, okay, yeah, I've never done one of these. Let me, let me do this. You know, sorry, Gabe. <laughs> but you know um i think you'll forgive you put like a questionable zombie grandma on somebody it, would you know, you? it was, it was oh. a portrait of his mom oh. and oh. that's a I, tough spot to start too I, that's a harder place to start especially than like, when it's on a colleague you know and, yeah. and you know he's he's do, he's doing so well for himself in kc and, like oh yeah, yeah yeah it's and it's just you're just like man instead of starting with back, like here's a pretty lady from the internet a horrible you know, right, like yeah. horrible kate beckinsale that i did you know it's just <laughs> like man you know and, and I, I look at that whole that whole transition yeah. is to start to where i'm at now and it's mm -hmm. such such a stark difference and it's amazing when you can see that stuff evolve i mean mm -hmm. even from the littlest you know littlest flash rose that you do and you're just like i look i got it as a matter of fact i still have a picture of that at home <laughs> and it's just it's horrible it's a little heart with a rose and i think it's probably done probably a couple million times across the oh probably summer. yeah but you look at it, lines are all jagged and you're just like man yeah, and I know what you mean. And, you know, like when I I had never even considered being a tattoo artist, it wasn't even because it, it wasn't something at the time that I could just learn on my own and just do. So I, I learned everything else, digital media and illustration, cartooning and stuff. So whenever I, I was just there, you know, he pretty much just put a machine in my hand. And you're like, all right, here's some melons. Have fun. And I'm like, what do I do? So the only thing I knew was graphic design and cartooning. I figured that was what I was going to be. Um, and I thought that that, you know, there was two others in the shop with us. Uh, who were really like huge into color and anime and stuff. So I thought, well, you know, and I would, I would ask them a lot of questions about colors and, you know, blendings and techniques. And um, I'm, I'm still cool with like all of that stuff. I'm a blue collar artist. I do pretty much whatever people need, you know? Um, I thought the black work stuff, like the heavy silhouette blacks, the black work stuff. Yeah, I could do it. But man, I, the fine line tattoo somehow kind of sneaked in and people kept, like asking about that so it's, it's just like, really popular right now and if i can there's, get good at fine line i can get good at most anything i think so there's a, a, a lot of people that like that fine line mm -hmm. stuff yeah i think that's part of just how um the idea of having a tattoo has opened up so much more to people that wouldn't have even thought about getting one 10 15 years ago oh, like yeah. i've tattooed grandmothers who work at a preschool yeah. And they're just getting their first tattoo and they're completely excited and so nervous. And it cracks me up because it's like, uh, it, I don't know, it's like watching a little kid that's about to lose their first tooth. Like, it's just, <laughs> there, there's just something in people and it brings out this, this young part of them that they're so nervous and excited about this new thing that they're going to try. Yeah. And, and they'll say things like, oh, I never would have thought, you know, like I, my mom would roll over in her grave, you know, stuff like that. But so you have all of these people that are in the service industry and in the workforce and especially women now that are getting tattooed that wouldn't have in the past. And so I think it's kind of, you know, dainty flowers are the gateway drug. You don't start with, <laughs> yeah. you don't start with something hardcore, you know? It's, <laughs> I don't know, man. You I like ease had... in and like, you know, maybe yeah. they're going to want like a Jaguar rip it into their flesh someday. But right now the dainty flowers, you know, that's awesome. Love yeah, it. You, but you have a, it. a certain brand about you though. Cause I mean, you, you come from, the administrative side you were mm -hmm. you worked at a college and and you were your um microsoft excel monkey yeah, yeah. you were what was your title you were a, like a project manager for uh yeah i was a program coordinator project manager yeah and this is the like, I'm, a, I'm a drawing people this is the first <laughs> job i've had for something that's not a nonprofit. and yeah. if you don't count internships it's also the first job i've had that's not for an education facility yeah yeah so how did that transition happen like, did you, you said COVID had something to do with uh, it. Yeah, I was, I was running summer camps for international students and I was doing project management and I was working with awesome people from all the, over the world and I loved it, but it had gotten to the point where it was a lot with having small kids mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, being in charge of like 400 people and all their problems all summer long and stuff would happen, you know, you, you have like a kid from Vietnam and they're, they're, um, their chaperone lets them buy a BB gun at Walmart and that's illegal in their home country. And we can figure out how to like get this kid back to Walmart and return this. Or, you know, you have a an English teacher from St. Louis and you, you or an English teacher from Columbia, take him to St. Louis on a field trip. He goes missing. We don't know where he is. Like, no, 
He's a grown up. We warned him. He has a schedule. We got to leave him behind, I guess. We can't have everybody else miss the rest of their field trip. He was on a helicopter tour of the city. He just like peaced out and went on a helicopter. I'm like, nice. bro. I mean, <laughs> so, that's you know, it's like cool. the amount of shenanigans. <laughs> went on a helicopter. Yeah, we right. had um we had a girl from Chile who just decided she was going to like live off of detox tea and rum for like two weeks when it was like 104 degrees outside. And, nice. you know, you think people from South America are used to the heat, but she was from like a mountain town. She was used to this like cool, crisp air. She was not ready for Missouri humidity. Oh, yeah. She was not eating real food. She was not drinking real water. She and wiped out hard out on the sidewalk on some, like a homeless person. On some <laughs> concrete in a, in a manufacturing facility when she was on a tour. And yeah, there was like an ambulance yeah. involved. She got some very expensive IV bags and learned how much American healthcare costs. That was fun. You know, oh, that's what yeah. I was doing. And then that's a crash course. Right. COVID <laughs> hit. And at the time I had 120 Saudi Arabians I was in charge of. There's families that um, there was a one or both parents and each family was an English teacher or some other sort of teachers. They were doing practicums in the school and leadership programs and training. And so COVID hit and they were here for like two more months. I was like, well, what are we going to do now? And so they were doing online programming. I was wrapping up all the reporting for their government, writing really big, long, terribly exciting documents and told my so, boss and I was like, hey, listen, I, you know, I, I can't be a great full time employee and also be a great mom because the kids were home. My little guy was potty training every 15 minutes. The timer would go off. I'd have to leave my Zoom meeting, take him to potty, come back like it was a lot. So and then you come here and manage us. Like, right. Well, like, then, so then I, I took like, I don't feel so right? bad. Now. I was home for like two years in between. Yeah, like you leave the kids and you got to come and take care of a geriatric. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was I was on for like two years in between until he got to preschool. But we'd I sat down with my husband on the couch and the kids were asleep. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go back in August. It was January. I was like, what am I going to do? You know, I thought about like I like Excel. I like art stuff. I don't know if I want to do graphic design and still be in an office for 50, 60 hours a week and have some old white guy tell me what to do and make a brochure. And he doesn't understand how art works. So he's like, oh, change this thing and thinks it's going to take five seconds and it takes 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And. It's like, I don't know if I want to do that. And and he was the one that mentioned, what about tattooing? And I've been, he, he, Nick, Nick was the one that brought yeah. it up. Yeah. Oh. And, and I had been watching different like tattooing shows. I actually started with, there's a, there's a show where they do like body painting and RuPaul is the host and it's on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called. There's a couple of seasons of that, but I watched that, ran out of episodes and then started watching Ink Master and a couple of other tattoo shows. And I was like, okay, this is cool. This is really cool. And I was like, no, I can't do that. Like, I don't even have any tattoos. Nobody's wanna, gonna want my art on them forever. I can't even finish a piece of art. Like, I got too much ADD. That's not happening. And he's like, no, I really think well, you can do it. Welcome to that club. Yeah, and I was that, like, that's that's really, like oh, we all have ADD. Yeah, and I, was like, I have file cabinets like that. Of unfinished Old, artwork, unfinished yeah, stuff. for Just days. It's like, it's like, no, I can't do that. He's scrapbooks like, out of it. Right? All. He's like, no, you can do it. You can do it. Like, just do some drawings. And so it's like, then that's when I started working on my portfolio all the way through July. And then I started, you know, contacting shops and showing them my portfolio. And I went a lot of places where they're like, oh, we love your portfolio. You seem great. But every chair is full right now. And mm -hmm. that's kind of been a challenge. Like our city is really saturated with tattoo artists. That's, so that was tricky getting started. That's why, you know what, that's why it's saturated is because you just you get everybody that thinks that they can just tattoo mm. and they come in and people see dollar signs and it's like sure i'll put a machine in your hand it's a hustle right. and boom done you know and then the state that's you know that's probably a whole nother podcast do a whole episode itself. on yeah how, you know, you feel the, about the how to deal with the state but you know it's it's in short the state are the our state of missouri standards is not at all what it you know the very minimal compared to what is actually like compared to a lot of a lot of states out there Missouri's for me, I think Missouri is probably one of the most laxed. I mean, yeah. aside Texas aside of the laxed. state, aside of the states <laughs> that that um, don't require licensing, right? I mean, I look at it as that you know, for Missouri, three hundred hours right. and fifty procedures is pretty pretty lax, considering that you're you're permanently putting some you know something on somebody's body, right? Um, well, they don't when really lay out parameters and details you, on that right. either. Well, when That's you've all got, give you is like two got sentences. hair salons out there that, you know, hairstylists that have to go through, 
anywhere from 12 to 1500 hours and ah, numerous procedures mm-hmm. on, on different on different levels of different things and that shit grows back <laughs> and, like then, <laughs> and then and then but then but then they also oh, okay. they also oh, okay. have written and practical <laughs> exams yeah. yeah that they have to do i mean in tattooing there's none of that from an accredited facility not just from right. some dude that's like hey i'll sign this yeah for you. here i'll sign a piece of paper for you and we'll just pretend that you did all of this and all yeah who are we to judge what is it good or what is what is good tattoos and, what, and what's, what's not bad. well there is a difference like between said, we'll put, safe I'll and say sanitary right tattoos another, right whole nother thing but yeah. 30 hours so 300 hours and that's like the moment you set foot in a shop that counts it counts every day you that just you sit show there and up sit that's on the eight, couch eight, and, eight, and smoke eight, weed all day there, that counts. yeah you can, yeah that counts uh and then you know and then and then 50 procedures which yeah. by the way i don't know about you or even you but like when i hit when i got my license so 300 hours came long before my 50 procedures mm. and uh mine was the reverse oh really mm-hmm. uh, that was, makes sense because there had, was days i did five that, procedures in a day yeah that's true <laughs> i was you cranking a, and i didn't even know but like i, I noticed from other apprentices that came after me mm-hmm. like if so like i did eight birds on my wife mm-hmm. i counted that as one procedure to me, it should of. be one I, procedure. It, I, and I don't regret it. It's not like it's each, not like each getting set up and tear down is a procedure. Right. But apparently there were some uh, apprentices after that came after me where it's like they they put like like a word or initials down arms and each individual piece of it was each letter was or like each little star yeah. draw or 20 stars I even on know somebody. Tattooing 20 on myself would count. No, that's no a 20. Proce- tattooing a, on yourself procedure, does count. a procedure is exactly that where you completely and fully set up. Yeah. Do a full tattoo from beginning to end and mm-hmm. tear down. And I don't regret mm-hmm. not knowing that. Like I, you know, it's not like I hit mm-hmm. 50 procedures regardless and was like, all right, cool. I know everything now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still technically and mm-hmm. I'm still in, a, in in an apprentice brand. And all of it, like, <laughs> like, like there's you know, obviously I, the time. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still like, an apprentice. I'm still learning. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, but you, there's things to learn the about stenciling and managing. The right. minute you get out all of this of business. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no not everything you. has to be like exp- like crash course. Not everything not everything has to require you ruining somebody or, yeah. or changing. You know, it's and I, I feel like our own discipline and our own like like uh, just consideration of others mm-hmm. like carried us a long way. But it was it was a much slower process, you know. And that's um, and that's something that you're seeing differently nowadays. And it's like before these were best kept secrets that you know that you go and ask another artist what mm-hmm. what machine setup they're using or what you know how they do certain techniques and they just shut the door on you they they shut you out nowadays it's like everybody's you know welcoming in like you well, can you learn still, anything I, think you, from I every- still think you have artists out there that that do that yeah. um that mm-hmm. they i don't know what the fear is like gatekeeping um but we're i mean we're all in the same business for the same reason you know? yeah mm-hmm. um, i think that's I, for yeah. them to hold back and go look you know this is this is the type of, of, of technique that I use or and, and why. Yeah. Um, or this is the type of needle groupings I use and why or inks. Um, it there's there, there was always a, a, a stigma with that where yeah. back when I started, I mean, it was hard to try to learn from others because um, nobody would tell you anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you could ask and nobody would tell you anything. So it was left up to you to you know, and mind you, this is all times where the, the internet was still not a big thing. Right. You know, you had cell phones, but you mm-hmm. didn't have YouTube. You didn't have Facebook. You didn't have all of these things that were they, you know, right. they're all available now. So you went to conventions and you watched mm-hmm. the people that that interested you the most. Yeah. And you, you just stood there. You know, it wasn't like you were just walking through the convention. You stood there and you watched and you watched mm-hmm. and you watched and you watched until you picked up stuff. And then you were like, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to try this. Mm-hmm. So then you go back and you go to work and you have a client that comes in and you just sit down. And you're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going <laughs> to try to do this like that guy did and see what happens. And slowly but surely you start to develop um, your own techniques and your own style and, um, your work then becomes a part of you to where it sets it apart from everybody else because you can tell okay well yeah. i you know there's artwork out there that i know um just by looking at it and be able to go okay i know i bet i bet you i can tell you who tattooed that 
Um, oh yeah, just and just you, well, by looking at because they've developed their own style and yeah. their own technique, um, which is which is wonderful because you get to see all of that um, come to light. You know, when you when you teach people the right way and, and you show them those things, and then they they pick up on other things and they pick up from others, and then they they apply that um, to what they already know, and you develop your own little thing and then you yeah. slowly the more tattoos you do the more you start seeing that and you're like oh wow and pretty mm -hmm. soon it's going to be like oh yeah kelsey did that tattoo oh mm -hmm. nate did that tattoo because mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell that from mm -hmm. anybody else's work and i, I look forward how to it's that done. yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting three years from now me like i got <laughs> it's gonna be pretty cool because <laughs> yeah. it's just like oh it looks just like the picture Cool, because I'm a blue collar artist. I do what I'm told. It's a factory brain thing. I've done graphic design for people that are just like, do this. Okay. And my only job was to do it well and do it quick or do it right and do it quick. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a really, oh, it looks just like the picture. Here it's do it right and do it slow. And it's, and it feels awesome <laughs> you at the time. And then I'm driving home and I'm just like, yeah, but what if I made it cooler in the picture? What if I put something cooler in the background? What if I added this? What if, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like there, it, that was my transition into realizing there was more to it than just doing what I'm told and just being a designer and the, and the actual art of it. And, um, there's just something about like, uh, the uh it's, it's, we talk about it in kaiju meetings all the time but um we we have come to discover as artists that um a person's style is actually more based on a collection of their let's say failures or what they're doing wrong that kind of builds their unique style when you see something and you're like oh man and i i don't know if you guys agree with that it's not necessarily all of the truth, but like there's a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of art that you see where people branded the way they draw their hands or the way they draw faces or draw their eyes or whatever, you know, like uh, Rob Layfield is a probably a perfect example uh, where you can't, you know, it's just how they how they interpret certain body parts and how they stand out oftentimes incorrect or like their anatomy is wrong, mm -hmm. but they systematically use it every time and that just becomes their style that becomes their thing. Uh, meanwhile, you got these new kids that are trying to get into the into the comic industry, and there's a very tight expectation of like, well, we can't mass produce, we can't like, you know, this art style. Well, that's just my style. Well, your anatomy's wrong. There's a difference. But when it comes to tattooing, would you say that looking at somebody's tattoo and you think, oh yeah, I know exactly who that is because their water is messed up or their you know, but it's like they've done it that way for so no, long that that's just their thing. For, now, for me, it's 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 their line work. It's their shade work. It's okay. It's the design itself. Mm -hmm. It's not. It has nothing to, for me. It's nothing. Um, or people that lean toward certain certain palettes, like yeah, like, yeah. You okay. know, like it's, oh, it's, it's not. It's not like decision. oh, they it's they did this skill. wrong or they did this wrong. And that's yeah. that's how you know them. No, it's. It's you, you understand that, that, you know, that, per, that's just how that person tattoos. That's just, yeah, it's more about their, decisions. that's how their style is, is developed. It's okay. that mm -hmm. you, you, you see, like, for instance, um, Tim Richardson, his, his stuff is, is very distinctive to me. It's, mm -hmm. um, like I could pick one of his pieces out and, and know, and, and see it, you know, if I didn't even know. And just be able to walk up and be like, yeah, that Tim did that. Tim did that. Or mm -hmm. I could see a piece that he's tattooed and it just float around without him posting it and be able to go, yeah, Tim did that. Um, it's those are just they're just certain things that he does that are very distinctive that mm -hmm. that tell you that that's who that person is. Um, I can I can kind of do that with like Bob Tyrell's stuff. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's, it's... <laughs> Bob Tyrell's stuff is very uh, Paul Booth, yeah. David Vega. I mean, Victor Portugal. These these are all people that I have I've studied and looked at and understand that when I see a piece, that's I, I can almost pinpoint that. Um, but there's there's some incredible artists out there that can definitely throw you for a loop that you just mm -hmm. don't don't know mm -hmm. yeah you know? and those are the things that you you want to study and kind of kind of try to implement into your mm -hmm. your arsenal of of things that you use when you tattoo and go okay i'm going to take that guy's you know little technique that he does there or how he mixes color and i'm going to i want to do that and try yeah. that and, something and, i like to do with that is look back at you know some of the people that are just 
extraordinary on the scene right now in New York or these other big cities. And and a lot of them have been tattooing the ones I follow, maybe like 10-ish years. And to look at where they are now and to scroll back through their Insta feed and see how far back do I have to go before I'm like, yes, this is not the same artist, you know? And then scroll back again, where's the, where's the previous stage in their development before yeah. that as an artist? And so whenever they're new, you can tell like, oh, every year, every two years, every three years, this person is a different artist than they were before. But then after they get into it a ways, then it's like, oh, now you have to go five years. Now you have to go seven years before you're like, this is a completely different artist. And once they kind of hit that swing, you can see the ball rolling yeah. almost in real time as you're scrolling back through their instant. It's a little different with people doing portraits or, <laughs> or like hyper-realism where it's just like, how well are you bringing this to life and how are you using these techniques oh, versus yeah, but like you, but you can see, but artists you can, or something. Yeah, but yeah. you can see that that change mm -hmm. i mean yeah, I've, I've definitely seen that growth mm -hmm. um with myself i mean it's it's so incredible to watch a person evolve mm -hmm. you know over time and go okay wow look at look at where you've come from even you know that's that's just something that's just you humbling yourself and being able mm -hmm. to go back and and see your transition from this to this to this to this you know and then to the point to where you're at and go uh you you find that spot where you kind of level off and then you have to reinvent yourself yeah. and go, okay, now what's the next step? What's the next thing that I can do to better my my ability of what I'm already, what I'm already doing? What can you add to your arsenal? What can I add yeah. to it? How know, much of that is based better? on what's popular at the time? Like there's these phases mm -hmm. where certain things like, like right now, fine line tattoos are really popular for the reasons, actually mm -hmm. the perfect reasons that you you described. But like over time, you know, like, and I won't see a lot of the things that I've done when it's healed, let alone in 10, mm -hmm. 15 years. But like, you know, I mean, nobody's complaining. Everybody seems to be happy with it and that's cool. But like, there seems to be these phases of certain tattoo styles and certain things mm -hmm. that are popular. And it's like, when everything you go comes, back to like, like new school, phases, it's, new just school like, it's, it's, it's they're, they're just like clothes. Like how I mean, much of what you were scrolling through is like, oh, okay, they're much better artists, you know, than they were five years ago. I was like, yeah, but five years ago, everybody was into the so I've been the stars. And yeah, the <laughs> so my like artist superheroes, the stuff I really love is the Art Nouveau and Art Deco yeah. that people have taken neo traditional tattooing and applied it to these art styles from like. 1900 to 1920 or 1850 to 1920 art styles a lot of it was out of like france and czechoslovakia there was some here too though um just incredibly stylistic with heavy outlines and uh, limited color palette and everything looks almost like like it's from some enchanted fairyland like it's just not <laughs> quite real you know all the the women's hair has like too many curls and waves oh, yeah, and yeah. swirls in it and and you know and the animals are just like a little too interesting looking mm -hmm. nothing's just like sitting there chilling and and there's a lot of symmetry in it as well and a lot of florals that are incorporated i love it i think it's so cool but that's something that you know you can't look and try to find a tutorial of how to do that on youtube and how to draw on that style. You can find tutorials no, of how to do got, black and gray portraits. You've got to been around a lot longer. That you're on yeah. your own. And, They've all been yeah. inventing it over the last seven, eight years or so. If I could take like, and this has only been recently, mm -hmm. but like I, you know, I go in with a very technical brain. I figured like if I can get line work and lettering good well, like I do, in, like as well as I see in graphic design in my brain, I, I could, I, I'll always have work. But like, I just recently started a, a, a tattoo on Swadley. Um, and I'm gonna say his name because I've made a, I, I've made a book about him, but <laughs> like literally. Mm -hmm. So uh, where I'm doing stuff that it's, it's like Bob Ross meets illustration mm. in a tattoo. And it's like, I'm, I'm playing with ideas and colors and stuff like that. And I figure like, like if I was to have a style, I think I would discover it or at least shine some light on like what makes me unique in this piece it could be the it could be the beginning of me like no i, I guess i am a tattoo artist a, an artist not just, you mm -hmm. know just um, like technically you know the technical artist on the side but like okay this could be a bridge for me that you know could could kind of get like i don't know it, it could connect a lot of dots for me and you know which i might be setting myself up for disappointment but so far, so good. I feel like those <laughs> clients are so invaluable to our development they because, are. and David, I've even heard you talk about 
people like this where they just push you a little bit further than what's comfortable, but they trust you enough to let you do your thing. And then you crank something out and you're like, well, apparently I can do that. Yeah. Didn't know I could do that two days ago, <laughs> no. you know? Like, and those people that come in, not, it, it's not as much the walk-ins that come in with something or they're like, you know, here's one of the top three artists in the world. I found this on Pinterest, do it on me exactly like that. <laughs> it's the ones that trust you and that are your friends and say, you know, like, hey, yeah. you know, I like this style. I had a friend come to me not too long ago. You guys saw it. He wanted a pinup of Han Solo. And it's like, I've never yeah. done a pinup before. I've never put a face on anything before. Like you the, did a pin up the, of a stormtrooper. Right. It, it had a like, helmet on. It's different. And, you know, so it's like drawing from scratch in like a Sailor Jerry esque ish yeah, yeah. style mm -hmm. and and yeah. trying to get the shading just right and knowing like, okay, this is a famous, recognizable human being. And if the shading's wrong, he's either gonna look sunburned or he's gonna look like a totally different person. And I don't want to just look like some guy in tight blue pants. Like I want it to be Han Solo, you know. And so having those clients come in and be like, you know, I trust you to do this. And I'm like, why are you trusting me to do this? It's crazy. <laughs> and then giving you the chance to work through it with them and send them that like seventh draft and be like, is this it? No. I changed his hair again. Is this it? You know, and and they they work with you through that process, and you get to grow through it, and then that gives you the opportunity to try it over and over again in different people, and and develop a style from that. I don't think pin up Han Solo was going to be like my style and how I'm going to take the world by storm, but no, I think it was an important stage of my know. development no, as an artist. It's, be it's, what takes it's, off. it's just <laughs> one of them things that you you find you get a client that. Um, like you said, trust you that that much, mm -hmm. and they throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, it's Catwoman. This, we're doing Catwoman. Yeah, you we're know? doing Catwoman. <laughs> oh, we're doing we're doing um, an Ursula that's that's in Salvador Dali style with like <laughs> ten foot legs, you know. And oh, I want it here, by the way. Right. Oh, yeah. hold on, I've got one drawn up in you my know, book already. Let me grab and, that. And you, you, the face is the size of a quarter, you know. <laughs> right, of course it is. And you know, I mean, within reason, you got to be then, able to. That's a professional. Like, right, well, that's and then it's and then it's a, a half elephant, and then it's a oh, I want a band around my leg, and then it's you know, um, here let's do this full blown. Disney, you know, Peter Pan theme thing on my on my cat, you know, or my my thigh. You yeah. know, it's, it's stuff like that. And, right. And every time it's something different. That's mm -hmm. like, okay, this is out of my wheelhouse. This is not something I'm used to doing. Are you saying twenty five year old David wasn't drawing Peter Pan fan art on the regular? No, it was. It, <laughs> it, no, it was. It was, it, was, it was straight out of a color book. I swear, <laughs> that's it was straight awesome, out of a color book. You know, Peter Pan, Wendy, <laughs> all of that stuff, Tinkerbell, uh, the crocodile. All, I mean, it just, I, I'll never forget that day when she was like, yeah, I want this whole Peter Pan theme uh, thing on my thigh. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Hold you on, know, let me get my I, Google I'm out a, real quick. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a black and gray artist, and you're wanting me to do this full-blown thigh piece all in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, I remember being so nervous going, okay, there's no way I'm going to do this. <laughs> I, I, Why are you I, asking me? I can't. I can't. I'm not. I can't complete this. I mean, are you kidding? Who? Who? who she, really? You're gonna trust me that much because I'm gonna mess this up. <laughs> I'm literally gonna mess this up. And I mean, granted, it's it's a cool piece. It's not one of my greatest pieces, mm -hmm. but it's there, and I did it. And it's like, wow, okay, cool. Just like when she came, I'd never done a colored portrait. When she came to me, she was like, "I want a Catwoman," and I'm thinking, "Cool, black and gray Catwoman. This would be awesome." No, I oh, I was there color. for that. I was there for your I, first color portrait. I, I wanted, I wanted oh, really? color. It was, it was that like, recently. Man, yeah. I just, yeah, that, that was like, badass. Talking, How many we're sessions talking was it? 20, it, it took? It took me a minute. I was it before COVID sessions. or it would have been after COVID, wouldn't it? Oh, it had to have been. I wasn't. It was after, I didn't you were yeah. around it was, before. It yeah. was. It was. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, year, year, two, year two ago. It was. Wow. It was. Wasn't I? I want to say I completed it. I completed it last year. I'm pretty sure it's in our Instagram. I completed it, it last year. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, you get a color portrait and you're just like, okay, I'm going to do this. And wow, here we go. And yeah, just freaking out the whole time. Just, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Every time I sat down to work on it, oh my God, what am I doing? But oh she God. loves it, right? It's just a good a, it's, piece. It's a good piece. It, it really is. I mean, I, mean, yeah. I, it's a cool I can piece. pick it apart and be like, well, there's so many other things I could have done with this. And, mm -hmm. I mean, but that's the nature of an artist. 
Um, but but like you said, those those clients are are like unicorns. You know, you mm -hmm. you only hope that you can find one that is willing to just let you cut loose on whatever. You know, mm -hmm. they come at you with whatever and go, look, this is what I want. This is what I want you to do. And yeah. you sit down and you do it. I mean, I've done everything from black and gray work to color work to portraits to whatever on this girl. I mean, and mm -hmm. it's it's and it's amazing. It's an incredible journey. I mean, yeah. we've got a lot, <laughs> we've got a lot to talk about. I mean, we've talked, I mean, she's been a client of mine since uh every bit of 13, 13 years now. And I've I've tattooed I, I want to say I've got you got walking they, portfolios. Not, I, I want to say, I, yeah, yeah. I want to say at least ninety-eight percent of the work that's on her is all mine. But you can probably see and be like, okay, that's that's like more than five years ago, David. That's like within the last two years, David. You know, like yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot there. I mean, you you see that growth um, between clients. I mean, you you just you get you get ones like that that are die hard that you know come and see you that's their their therapy and mm -hmm. that's that's your learning experience you know you get you know they get the therapy out of it and you get the the whole learning process mm -hmm. of, right let me oh i get to do this that's something i've never done before and you dive into it because their mindset is way different than yours when my, you're getting into that. Now she's got bragging rights though, because yeah, she's got yeah. your first color portrait on her. Yeah, right. She does. <laughs> my it's wife total. was, you know, she was the first client ever. And I mean, and that's a pretty common story, you know, mm -hmm. significant other in some general, you know. I was my first same. client. You were your first? <laughs> I was my very first client. Yeah. Um so And I sucked as a client. <laughs> I totally sucked. You as were a all right for me. I totally sucked as a client. It was on your ankle too. Yeah. No, I um I Shanoa was always the one that um, she always pushed, like within reason, like things that I, I didn't want to just use her as a guinea pig. I didn't want to just put stuff on her just because it would have it would have helped me. I wanted her to actually want the things that she wanted mm -hmm. that she got. But I also wanted she wanted it to be something that like pushed me to the next level, something that I was familiar with, and you know. So she, you know, to this day, she's she's very proud of all the work that we I've done on her so far. But she had like. Uh, several pieces on her before I I worked on her. So, you know, I didn't want like she has Hogwarts at night from here all the way up her shoulder, like her whole mm -hmm. her whole arm. And that one wasn't you. And right? that was not me. No, mm -hmm. that was years before I ever picked up a machine. And um, and it's just like, great, I'm going to have the, she's going to have my apprentice work on her. She's going to have all these other pieces on her and she's going to have this Hogwarts piece from a seasoned yeah. professional that, you know, and I and I always like I always appreciated her because she was always supportive and always like happy and, and and she was always happy for me and she was always supportive always you know um but it's different when you're doing something that they are personally a fan of like on a more personal level um and it just hits different like mm -hmm. it, it's one thing to be a tattoo artist and my wife is like i'm happy for you but then if she's like actually a fan of my work and my progress and what i'm doing same with potbelly mammoth whenever i it wasn't until volume two that i realized that she was actually a fan of the book and she was like what do you think of volume two so far she goes you i don't have it yet you put a paywall behind it I'm like oh she goes yeah i really like it i really want to know what's going on i'm like oh i thought you were just humoring me well will your wife not join <laughs> your patreon <laughs> I guess I didn't think about it. I was like, you do know I can just show it. Like, well, where is it? You know, so, you know, volume two when I finish it. Right. But that's the thing. It's like, it, it's it's much different when, you know, like, and I, she's actually a fan of something that I'm doing, not like on a personal level, not just supportive of me. And I was like, well, I'm glad because you have that on you for the rest of your life now. And she's like, that's cool. I'm happy with it. I'm glad. And it, it, I don't know, it just, um, it kind of pushes you to like, all right, well, I want to do this. And she knows better than anybody that, like, I like to plan. I like to strategize. I don't think there's any other job in all the design and all the animation, all the cartooning that I do, anything with Kaiju. There is nothing that has made me lose sleep or made me throw up in a parking lot before coming in. <laughs> like, just the anxiety and the stress. And, and just wait, it's coming. And, and that's tattooing. what I mean. There is nothing like tattooing that has done that for me. Like, it's happened to me, David. I'm, I'm ready to move on. But then, you know, whenever we first started talking, you and Mandy both explained to me that, like, oh, yeah, that didn't really leave. Like, ah, thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, <laughs> like, I was I was having that yeah, conversation with yeah, Nick. I always get like, nervous over pieces. It's yeah. It's it's no different than 
when I was a musician, I was always nervous going, you know, before going on stage. I always get nervous when it when I'm doing large scale pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if I don't if I don't feel that, then there's some, I, I think there's something wrong. Right. And I'm going into this not right. I guess that not prepared. You know, then it's like okay, now I'm really set, I think setting myself up to fail mm -hmm. because then I'm not. You're gonna be making I'm not thinking about, about it. I'm not right. worried about right. it. I'm yeah. not concerned. Um, it's just oh, I'm gonna go in and do this. Statue. There's a difference between being apathetic and being confident. <laughs> yeah, like you don't ever want to be apathetic, I, I, I but I, but confidence isn't bad. Like no, you 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 want to have confidence as long as you're not being I mean, cocky. But it's 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 hard it's hard to have a lot of that confidence when you're you're going into something um, that you've not done before. Yeah, you know, when you're just you're looking at this and going, oh my god. How am I? How am I going to execute this? Yeah, because if you're confident, you know, either I'm going to execute time, it yeah, or yeah. I'm going to execute it. Right? <laughs> yeah. it. It's just you, know, you get you get one or the other. That's just how yeah. it turns out. You know, I mean, every once in a while you get those in betweens where you're like, okay, yeah, that's all right, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it all it all comes down to that execution. If you're not not nervous about going into a piece i mean i have ones that i mean you're you're one and done's or simpler ones yeah that i you know like the one i did the today just mm -hmm. it's just it's a non-thought process type of tattoo sure uh, which i hate saying but it, they, they, there there are pieces like that yeah but there was just, a time where it would have made you i don't I, yeah <laughs> I, I mean you know 25 years ago yeah, yeah. i would have thought long and hard about that piece yeah. and been like but it was okay, still clean it this, was still a beautiful this, this. piece it was just a simple um, style you've done a yeah, million it's times just, yeah. it's just a simple yeah. design it's just something that you do i mean when you get you get into a any type of portrait or anything like that i mean there's there's always that that thought that thought process of how i'm how i'm going to go into it how i'm going to mm -hmm. do it where I'm going to start, how I'm going to start, um, what needle groupings I'm going to use, you know, it's, those, those are my, my things that I go through. I can't speak for other artists and what their, their mindset is going into a, a big piece or, you know, something that's going to take hours to do. Um, but that's my mindset you know, mm -hmm. every time that I go into it, you know, it's, even if I've got multiple sessions in on a piece, it's, I still go in that same thought process. Yeah. Okay, what am I going to do and how am I going to approach this? And am I going to do this right? You know, and then the end result, once I'm done and I can step back and look at it and go, okay, yeah, you did that right. You, you're good. You know, mm -hmm. it's, th those are the gratifying moments of it all. You know, after, after you've stressed, you know, for 48 hours before <laughs> yeah. a tattoo going, what am I, shit, what am I gonna do? Like, How am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do Wiping this the track? tears away yeah, and yeah. trying to fight the sleep deprivation. Like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, laying in bed, looking, staring at the ceiling. Oh dear God, please don't let me fuck this up. There's, yeah. um, we've been, we've been doing this. We've been cryptic tattoo and social gallery for officially five months. Is that it? feels like it's Does been it so feel much like longer, longer than the, yeah <laughs> I mean, it does that. feel like way longer we've done a lot like i said we did this yeah. within the first month or two like <laughs> we've done a lot with okay that makes sense i so i, I think we, months, we, yeah. we 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 have made some serious strides in the yeah. five months that we've been here well there's a lot of I, things I we think wanted we, to we we were smart and taking the big rock and throwing it in the pond yeah <laughs> and going you know what watch these ripples this is what we're gonna do yeah we made some and, serious strides in the first three weeks yeah wasn't it wasn't it like day 13 we were like ready for inspection and i think day 14 right. was when we yeah got technically we were available we were starting in june of this year of 2023 so it was about a half like which was about two weeks earlier than our official like start day i think it was day 13 we, yeah, we've been we in here and day 14 we were two Friday. weeks ahead of schedule our, our goal was to be open july 1st right. and we were put in a stink to where we had no choice but to go yeah. you know what we're diving in head first right. now it and worked out we had and we haven't like, right. we, and we jammed this and we got it open in two weeks we showed up that day and started yeah. ripping up carpet the, <laughs> we need to like send a fruit basket or something to that inspector because he was yeah, <laughs> he well, was awesome. He, you know, he'll, he'll be here sometime this month. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, and then within like a couple to... of weeks, he came back and, and set us up for a con our first convention, a comic book convention. Yeah, because he was like, right. so he we, was so flexible in a pen. Yeah. It was good. So that we, he we, really worked with. We us hit the ground running because yeah. of him. Actually. And I think that the first tattoo I did it like 
I want to say like 30 minutes after the inspector left, something like that. Because yeah. <laughs> I had them on the phone and they had a babysitter and I was like, are we going to make it? I was like, well, <laughs> he's here. As long as he gives us the green light, like you're on standby, I'll tell you go. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Five months in. Yeah. Everything. We're rolling. Gold. Yeah. And there is a fourth and I, I'm embarrassed that we didn't bring her, bring her up, but there is a fourth. She's actually the third co-owner of Cryptic, uh, Mandy. Unfortunately, she's been very sick lately, and mm -hmm. she just bought a house. I don't know if it's related. Maybe she bought a house that's cursed, and then she probably it's haunted. Sick. She would love haunted, it yeah. if she bought a house that was haunted. Yeah. Bought a that's house haunted. That, haunted. that's haunted. <laughs> that, that increases so. the value for Mandy. But she's also haunted. not like a huge camera and recording recording kind of person. Did you check the basement to make sure there was nobody buried <laughs> Is there a in basement? there. I have no clue. I don't know. Probably I have none. They didn't tell you about the basement. It's because it's right? full of ghosts. Oh, they add it. Maybe there's yeah. something in the attic. I really look forward to bringing Mandy on, though, when she feels comfortable, because she's a very fascinating person and really talented. I mean, you want right. to talk about growth. I don't know if it was something that she just stepped into or she always had it. She just didn't feel comfortable. But she, Mandy is very talented. She's mm -hmm. been doing a lot of really cool stuff. And really she's another one that's had a couple of those, like, super gem clients that right. just, like, they're like, hey, we're going to do this. And she's like, no, I haven't done that before. That's hard. They're like, yeah, we're going to do this. Like, And they, they push you. They put you on the spot. And then, ooh, Just they, wait. You're gonna, like, I think that's where you're make at sweat. right now. Dude. Yeah. I think with that that piece that you're doing. I'm oddly excited about it, though. I, make you sweat and see I even shine. told myself yeah. outside. I was but like, I Nate, think, this is something that you would have shit your pants you know about. What? And it, you would have panicked out. things work, you know. But this time I was oddly excited. And I don't know why. Maybe you haven't it, you haven't found your shit. It, it, no, like it'll, I, it'll happen. I just got here, and I've already watched everybody else become a better artist in the little short amount of time I've been with you. Like Mandy is not the same artist she was nine months ago when I arrived. Like you're not the same artist. And David's not even the same artist, which is saying no. something when you've been tattooing that long well, to still be able to make those kind I, of strides. I, I I attribute that to to change. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, <laughs> um, you know, we're gonna have when, a whole when, episode when on this. Just, yeah, when you're, you're in a <laughs> health, you're in physical, a spot. and mental, and other yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, your health plays a role. Your mental stability plays a role. Your atmosphere plays a role. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you can align all of those things and yeah. have them all working in your favor, mm -hmm. I mean, of course you're gonna you're gonna be better. Yeah. You're gonna do. You're gonna start feeling better. Uh, about what you're doing, what you're putting out. Um, you control your work when you can control your environment. You know, it, and, and not that your clients aren't already happy, but they leave happier. Mm -hmm. Well, you and know? it's like, how many clients did we have that were perfectly fine where we were? Mm -hmm. And then they've, they've jumped ship over here with us whenever we, we started this. And they're just like looking around going, oh, man, it all makes sense. It's yeah. so, so much better. Like, oh, where was that Google review like that. back yeah. then? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah right, right. <laughs> like, I mean, we're not like looking to talk shit with anybody about it. But it's like at the same time, like, where was all this feedback? Like when it mattered, like, you know, I mean, it's it's fine. Everybody everybody finds their, their environment and they're fine with it. But then it's like they don't yeah. know what's better until they, they're in it. And different environments work well for different right, artists right, and different yeah. styles. But also there's, you know, there's environments with a little bit of toxic stuff happening. There's environments with a lot of toxic stuff happening. Right. And I'm so grateful for this environment where the artists are supporting each other, supporting each other's clients, showing artistic integrity. Nobody's taking on a project just because it looks like dollar bills that walk through the door. You mm -hmm. know, if somebody comes in and they're like, hey, I want a black and gray portrait. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to have you talk to my friend David. He's an extraordinary artist and he's going to do you right you <laughs> know we we help each other out and i'm just glad each other that you guys won't experience um a lot of bad shops yeah i mean a lot of a there's lot a of, growing process a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, people, a lot of people shop hop and have go to hop through five to toxic shops you know i mean out. i am too I've because been, but if I started when I was in my 20s, I figure that there's a learning process in that. There is a side of the industry that they, I will never it, see personally. I'm aware of stuff you put up you with in your 20s. You know what it goes, yeah. to, what it goes down to, what it gets you to is exactly this. This is what it put. This is mm -hmm. what it drives you to. Yeah. It drives you to go, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this on my own because I can't do that with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have dealt with every possible mm -hmm. owner there is on the face of the earth. To, I mean, my to, depression to in my twenties definitely that. speaks for the damage that I've, I, you know, like so I, you, I've had my experiences, but I didn't have to be treated like shit entirely. But no, but you, I mean, but you guys are, are I mean, super fortunate that you only went through one one stint. 
mm-hmm. to where they yeah. now you're in a place. I had to. Where you know, where you know that. Okay, look, I'm just going to. Mine wasn't as bad as yours on the second one either. Like that was. We have to talk about that. That's going to be a whole podcast of its own, but you know, a whole episode of its own. But like, just the. Like I'm very thankful for the opportunity and what I was brought into, and I'm glad that it did. It went the way, because if I was a kid, mm-hmm. I imagine it would have to have been different. But I have been seasoned in so many different other avenues and and in older in age that I'm you know I I had the I had the luxury of just like saying fuck it and leaving at any time. Mm. Not everybody has that, right? No, and there's, I didn't. And, there, I didn't and that's that the thing. It's like I, that's a privilege that I have to check because there's right. a lot of kids that walk in the door looking for a ta- a, a, an apprenticeship that it's this or or die. Like they don't have that. Con- I I didn't have that conviction. Right. And your you options know? are limited when you have that financial dependency, and it, or if you're from a city where it's well, like I mean, that's the I, shop. I mean, when I first started, you know, I, no it was it was I literally worked a, a an eight to five job yeah. with the state of mm-hmm. Missouri. Um, and worked that and then drove an hour to the tattoo studio and spent from six to midnight and then would drive home and go mm-hmm. to bed and do it all over again. And I would do this literally six days a week, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. that's that's when you know you're in it. When you're spending that kind of time, you're, you're developing yourself and developing your style and who you are as an artist. And you're holding down a full time job to pay your bills because you're not making nothing yeah. tattooing. No. You're just you're you're learning. You're in the infant infant stage, and um, you know it took me several years of working a full time job and tattooing on the side. You know, as as a part time job, I don't really call it on the side, but mm-hmm. as a part time job, and then you know to be able to sit back and go, okay, you know what, I'm gonna. Just stop doing my full-time job and yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna do this right. full-time <clears throat> that that is that is extremely scary yeah because mm-hmm. you're like am i gonna make enough money you know am i gonna be able to support my family am i gonna be able to do the things that i want to do right especially <laughs> and, if you're and i think i think it, you yeah. know when you're hungry it it definitely pushes you and then you know knowing that okay look man i gotta i gotta put food on the table i gotta pay bills I got to do this and you go out and you just you you make yourself do it and you do it and you do it and you do it and you treat it just like a, a, a any normal job you know people are like oh man you're you're a tattoo artist this is that's fun that's cool you know it it is to an extent but it's it's a job yeah I, and that's I a get thought up that, and you know. I, I i put you know one leg in each pant yeah. pant leg you 15, know every day 20 years working work. in a in a factory with really shitty people for really shitty people or or washing trucks you know that like on third just all those third shifts for you know nights for like 20 years mm-hmm. it's like art was a way for me it was a desperate attempt for me to get out of it so but all i knew was illustration and graphic design i didn't even consider that tattooing wasn't even mm-hmm. was even a thing so and that was that was what was most difficult is i don't remember most of my 20s because i was just blindingly depressed and you know granted i had kind of my own jam working whenever I was, whenever this became an option. Um, yeah, it's like, I, I'd like to think I paid my dues in a handful of different ways. Thankfully, um, and I don't envy anybody's process, whatever it is that makes you convinced that like, and I was always jealous of that conviction. It wasn't the job that you did. It wasn't how well you did the job. I was jealous of anybody that got to work in air conditioning. I would look at somebody at Walmart and be like, you lucky bastard. Cause they got to, you know, they weren't in 120 degree heat mm-hmm. every day for 10 years. Like I, I was jealous of people's conviction of like, no, this is who I am. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to do. And I still have that. I'm still jealous of you. Of, and just that, that moment of like, oh, this is me because tattooing is cool. I like tattooing, but it's not the whole reason why I show up every day. It's, it's a vehicle for what I'm wanting to do and what I'm building. And it's this, it's this, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But like tattooing is like any other job I've had in that regard. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, it's something I take serious and it's me and it represents everything that, you know, but it's the vehicle. It's that, that gateway into finding what I want to be when I grow up. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact that if I were to walk away from tattooing, if I were never to tattoo again, I'd feel heartbroken. Like I'd feel really disappointed in myself, which probably says a lot. 
That tells you right there where where you're where you're at. So that okay. that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to be tattooing when you're 80, but that means you're not done with it, and it's not. Done I with probably you. Believe it will be tattooing. When <laughs> well, if I have anything to do with it, you'll be, you know, you'll be, you'll be building a, an empire, a base, you know, of some sort that you I can, would, you I, can dabble I'd in other be, things. I'd love to be retired by by retirement age. That'd be yeah, great. that'd be cool. I don't want to be tattooing literally yeah. into my six late 60s. That's was, not me. Yeah, I'm. That's fine. I expected when I got into it, like I anticipated apprenticing for a year to two years because that's what I'd read and that's what I saw other people doing online. And so I figured like, you know, I was really lucky that I was already establishing a job. My husband works and I'd been working full time. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the house sorted out, all that stuff. So I was like, you know, I can I can do this. I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to be there all day, all week for two years and not make any money and then turn around and start making money. And when I started in at the first shop I was at before the shop you guys were at, there was not a whole lot of honesty and transparency about what tattoo artists make. And I didn't expect to be making bank, but mm -hmm. um, there was definitely some numbers thrown at me and what those artists were making that was absolutely not accurate. You know, after being there and being like, I know how many tattoos you guys are doing. And, and there really was one artist at that shop that was not sustaining themselves off of walk-ins which is a tough thing to do in a city with a ton of tattoo yeah. shops. Um, but, you know, like, I, this is not I'm a not, city, not a city where you think you're going to make six figures. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Mm. And I, you know, I'm not like making enough that this could be my full time job by any means. You know, this would. But I I'm more than breaking even on my shop <laughs> rent, you know, and like and I feel like I'm growing as an artist and honestly, I expected to be making nothing still at this point in my journey. So I'm grateful for where it is and um I, that's really cool that some people are able to fully make a living off of it i'd love to be that in that place someday where it's like it anyway, doesn't feel anyway, like we'll get it's 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 hard yeah it's, it's a lot it takes a lot of work yeah and what people don't understand is that it's not just your tattooing the skill. work it's the sacrifice that you have to put into it i mean mm -hmm. the time i have sacrificed so much of my family time mm -hmm. for this uh not just the studio, but just my career, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of it has been, I, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and family, you know, totally taking a back seat mm -hmm. to it all. And it's hard. It it really sucks sometimes. I mean, because you, you take time away, you go to conventions, you know, you mm -hmm. get away from family and you look at it as uh, okay this will be a cool little break but then you go and you work <laughs> and it's not mental and then you find out that you go back to your hotel room and it's like okay well you know my family's not here yeah right and yeah. then you know you, you you get a little homesick and yeah you know but you, at the end of the day the end result is the same it's you know, you're doing this for your, for your family. You're doing this mm -hmm. to take care of you. You're doing this to establish who you are and, and where your place is in this business. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, the it, it all works out, you know, and you, you find you find and you make that time for, yeah. for family. I mean, whenever uh, you need to. I mean, that's that's kind of the, the beauty of doing this full mm -hmm. time is that. You can go, okay, you know what, I need to take this time. I'm gonna go and do this instead. Right. <clears throat> and, I, and you can and, and you can kinda of, it gives you the ability to kind of work around your client and your right. yeah. your your time and, and go, okay, look, you know, I can do this, this and this and mm -hmm. appointments here, here and here. Yeah. Uh, well doing this has checked all the boxes that I always looked at other people and was envious of. It checks all the like boxes. The flexibility of, and just the flexibility, creativity. living my own life, having my own thing, you know, and, and not having to trust I mean, I put a lot of trust in you guys, but you've earned it. It's not like I had to just put my faith in you guys. I I you know, I put a lot of trust in it. Right. But I also know that if it, you know, goes up, like I can handle it. You know what I mean? It's it's weird. Just there's um it just there's a, an engagement with people. It's the graphic design that people care about. It's actually graphic design that I enjoy doing <laughs> like, compared to sitting behind a computer. And um, but there is a lot of sacrifice. And I think it was a, a routine that Chanel and I have already been established with. But granted, we don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't imagine how hard that is for people with kids and having to, you know. Yeah, because like right now I leave around 245 or three o'clock on yeah. weekdays generally because childcare is so expensive and mm -hmm. you know i can't afford to be putting up that much money just to be able to work right now um but 
I, you know, I know my art career would be so much further now if I could stay till 9 p.m. every day, but that's just not it right now. And, and so like, I don't feel guilty about it though, you know, and I'm really looking forward to the time when it's like, oh, you know, my kids are older. Um, if, if I get to where I want to be artistically, could it be like, hey, we're just going to go to Italy this week and it's a write off and we're going to, we're yeah. going to learn stuff while we're there and we're going to go to Spain and I'm going to go meet this artist that I really love and, you know, do this thing. And, but, it's not where we're at right now, and I'm totally fine with that. We'll get there, though. But yeah, I'd love to be there. At some <laughs> we, point. Yeah, we have a lot of ideas those, and plans. But you know what? Those are those are good goals, right? right? Yeah. I mean, Pack your backpack. We're going to Spain, guys. We like, should always have the castles are waiting. Your your <laughs> yeah. two, five, and ten year goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I appreciate that the flexibility, and that's another thing about the shop, just not being toxic. Like there's always understanding of, you know, this person is sick. This person's buying a house right now. This person's spouse is going through some medical stuff and there's always something going on in everybody's right. personal life. And I feel like we have the communication established and the respect for each other. We can say, Hey, this is going on in my life right now. And everybody, you know, picks up where the other person left off, whether it's yeah. like, Oh, I'm going to be in the nobody's, shop that day. Nobody's afraid I to, to be carry gone the or, extra weight. Yeah. yeah. It's, it doesn't you know? cost as much. And I appreciate life. not having to worry like, are they going to pay the bills? Am I going to have internet? Am I going to have lights? <laughs> Is there going to be toilet paper for my clients? You know, stuff like that. Like, I don't have to worry about it. Is this it. shop going to be clean? I was literally, <laughs> I was literally keeping toilet paper and paper towels in the back of my car in case I walked in one day and there wasn't any. Because there'd wow. been enough days I'd walked I, in and there wasn't I, any. And I didn't want to tell my clients, too. I'm sorry, you need to go to the gas station down the street yeah, because we don't have our crap together enough <laughs> to let you have a crap in our, in our <laughs> place of business. Like, it's completely ridiculous. It's, I don't know. Maybe that's my project manager background. It's like, you're going to yeah, no, wipe your just, butt with your sleeve. And I didn't that's expect it to come in. That, like, I didn't expect it to be the same as working in a university in a state oh, yeah. school. Like, I know there's no HR department. I know it's not going to be the same environment. And that's one. part of what I like about it. It was literally called HR, but it was just a it was just a messenger chat. Yeah. It well, was everybody the, but the person we were having problems with. I expect a certain <laughs> level of adulting. And I'm not talking about the goofing. The goofing is fun. But a certain level of adulting, like, I don't know, maybe you need internet to run your business and maybe yeah. you pay that bill. And if you have trouble forgetting, you put that crap on auto pay. Okay. So, so here, like, you know, stuff like that. Well, let it's me ask nice. you this. <laughs> <laughs> and we should we could probably wrap up with some something, yeah. something here. Is there anything previously that you miss since being here? <laughs> oh no, that's, that's a nice thing. I didn't know. I mean, I mean okay, so actually, was... yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let, yeah, let me let me let me let me say this. There's one thing, one thing that I miss, and that person's not here anymore. Mm. Oh, that's fair. So that there is only one thing that I miss. That's from fair. that. I was thinking you were going to say something like, "Yeah, having somebody go around and take orders for delivery, food delivery." Because we don't, they did we don't have regular lunches people, here anymore. The we people don't. from the bakery we starve. We seriously starve, and that's not good. Yeah, we should we should fix that. We can fix that. <laughs> we can fix it. Man but cannot yeah. live on Dr. Pepper's alone. No, um, who you're talking about? We're gonna have to. We're we're gonna have a dedicated episode four and we have some leftover food like, delivery oh no i meant for chocolate kevin, swizzle pop yeah. oh yeah okay. yeah yeah kev, kev will get a, a, a solid An episode, episode yeah. to himself i i did appreciate like being able to learn from the other artists and i feel like i learned something from everybody that i was with some mm -hmm. people i learned more than others some people is kind of what not to do you know just in terms of like attitude and the way people speak to each other and the way clients are treated i'm 100 percent grateful that i'm here but I still think that like there was valuable things I picked up from the people there, even though like there's some of them that I prefer not to work with on a daily basis, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. it, some of them like I still keep up with on Facebook and I'm yeah. like, you know, that, you know, you did this, that and the other art and you're really getting better at this. And I'm really proud of you. And that's great. Sure. And that, that's fine. But like, I want to be here. I like it here. <laughs> Because I mean, no, we, 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 is, we didn't have intentions of being any more than the three of us. So when we took you on, like I saw a lot of the struggles that I was going through. That girl makes quesadillas. I, <laughs> I, it was just I, it was just, I saw you sinking there, and I it, saw it was, you not. We knew that it was not going to. That was I, not going to turn out see, well. When for I you. came in there, I knew it wasn't a forever spot for me. I knew that, but I was like, listen, I'm a grown up. I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to be here till I feel like I can't learn anymore, whether that's a year or two years, whatever. Because there wasn't somebody there doing the style that I wanted to learn anyways. I was like, when I get to that point, then I can go talk again to these other artists that I really respect that are saying, you know, I don't really have the time to take on an apprentice right now. And say, I actually know how to use a machine. I know how color works. Mm -hmm. I know how, you know, light and dark and, and art theory works. 
can I be here now? That was my plan. And it didn't go that way. And that's fine. <laughs> there was a, I had a, but there was a, there was a reason it. that it didn't happen. That yeah. Way for you. Well, and, and you, I saw a lot of similarities between myself and you, like you and I are wired very similarly mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And I saw that you were capable of far more than you were being offered and you weren't given a fair shake very much like I was. Yeah. However, there was a deeper, darker side of what was you were going through compared to me. There was absolutely some disrespect that I think was based on the fact that I'm female and that I wasn't necessarily the kind of female that would be useful to some of the people in the shop in ways that they were hoping. Like I'm, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm you're mom. married with kids and yeah. you know, you have, yeah, I'm, I'm not the party type. Fun girl. I, was, I was the cool, talented artist friend that, you know, like, I guess he just liked to hang out with yeah. and, that, and that's perfectly fine. And, and I do not have any, like any, but that's the thing is like, you know, there was a lot of faith like I didn't get that that awesome moment where somebody hands you a box or a bag of parts, and when mm -hmm. it's it, I didn't have that Jedi moment where the master hands a padawan like pieces to a lightsaber, yeah. and once you assign once you assemble your own yeah. lightsaber, you are you are officially. I was a, ready a Jedi. to work hard, but like, I was I not ready that. to learn it all on my so own. I did it myself. Yeah, <laughs> I was ready to listen to everything they told me and do everything I was asked to do, yeah. and you know, learn it five different ways and then figure out which one worked the best for me. I came in, I was like, I want to learn coil. I want to learn, you know, all these different types I still of machines. Think you guys need to tattoo with. A coil. I'm game. Yeah, it's I'll like I I want to learn all of it. Yeah. Just like I feel like I need to, just for the history and the value right. of of the art, but also I'm aware just, of it. I'm a, it I, I've be, researched it. Yeah, yeah, like what if I just happen well, to really I've like got, that? I've got coils. Okay, we'll <laughs> yeah, do dust coils them off, bring them in. We'll, dude, we're recording. We'll, 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 we'll record it. We'll make it. We'll make a thing. <laughs> you, just, you, you guys just gotta buy the buy the needles and the yeah. disposable tubes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, I just didn't expect to be, you know. Completely swimming on my own, and I want to collect coil machines. They look so cool. Yeah, I've I've got my two, and that's it. And that's then I've enough. got a whole slew of other machines. I would you can get like your to really tiny just... one for like an earring. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want it. I want no, it. maybe not that cool. <laughs> not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys. This has been a lot of fun, and this is this just sitting here at this table as a test. You know, this has been a long time coming. We work really hard for this, and oh, uh, this is this just the beginning, folks. Yes, yeah, so. the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah, and uh, I really appreciate you having faith in us and yeah. coming along with us. Like, thanks for all yeah. your hard work on, you know, the skulls, the, curtains, <laughs> the lights, the yeah. sound, the cord, Next, the laptops. I'm going to make, uh, I'm thinking about the arcade cabinet that I'm building. I thought about instead of doing artwork for the side of it, I thought about mounting more, like make a sarcophagus. Make like a, like a, um, yeah, what is it? What is a, uh, oh, sarcophagade? A cryptic sarcophagade. <laughs> I don't know if beating it up though and hitting my, mashing uh, buttons will. We could like paint it like you're a gonna sarcophagus. Have to seriously, glue those. Yeah, things. I know. yeah, I know. If you're yeah. like putting stuff, yeah, because people are gonna be banging on that side. No okay. track and field on that. It's gonna fall on somebody's toe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have balls falling off the wall. We'll have balls jumping That's off so the wall, metal. just like we had a sink jump off the wall that one day and try to attack David. But you know, <laughs> know. sometimes yeah. you have a weird yeah. way. Sometimes you get That's attacked a whole by a bathroom podcast, sink. The sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that sink is old news. We got a beautiful new sink that's not going to jump off of any walls and nope. yeah. attack anybody. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thanks again. All right. All right that's good.